In this episode, we'll give you a demo of Dante, which is basically digital audio over Ethernet. And we'll do that with a couple of different devices. My sound device is 888 and a device called the Switchback Matrix. Now, first of all, this is just a demo. And really all I'm trying to do here is kind of explain to you some new technologies that are used on some of the larger productions, just so that you're aware that they're out there. And so that sometime in the future, if you are going to be working on a bigger production, you understand how this works. So the age old problem with audio is, and this could be for live audio, production sound mixing for film and video, or any other kind of audio application is how do you run cables long distances? It can be a real nightmare sometimes. And you have to run a massive bundle of cables from the mixing board all the way up to the stage and a bunch of cables back as well. So that big bundle of cables called the snake is really difficult to work with. And it takes a lot of work to get it out. And it's a massive cable. Often the diameter is huge. So it's a tripping hazard, so on and so forth. But there are a variety of ways now, especially with something called Dante, to solve that problem where you only have to run a single CAT6 cable between your mixer and other devices on the network. Now in our channel, we don't cover a lot about front of house sound or live sound reinforcement or any of those things. So we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in the context of production sound for film and video. Now, first of all, what is Dante in a little bit more detail? Well, first of all, it's basically sending digital audio between various devices out on an ethernet network. So that's not just the process of sending audio from a mixing board up to a stage box where you have a bunch of microphone inputs. That's one thing you can do with Dante, but it's much more than that. And in fact, there are a variety of technologies out there already between mixing boards and stage boxes, they're called. Stage boxes being a box with a whole bunch of microphone inputs and some outputs to feed audio into your power amplifiers and loudspeakers. Now, a bunch of mixing boards have technologies like that already. They're different from manufacturer to manufacturer. And really all they allow you to do is replace that snake, which is a huge, huge thing. Definitely advantage. But Dante takes it a step further. Dante just doesn't replace a snake in a live sound situation. It allows you to have a whole network of different devices talking to each other. You can have transmitters and receivers on a Dante network. Obviously a transmitter is sending digital audio from its device over to some other device on the network. And a receiver, of course, is receiving a digital stream over the network from another Dante device. Now, there's an app that you can run on your computer that's also connected to the Dante network that allows you to take care of all the routing setup. And it's very simple and it works really, really well. Now, what's super important about digital audio is that, especially if you have multiple devices, all those devices have to be, absolutely have to be, in lock sync. They have to be synced up very, very, very well. And what Dante does over a network is that it goes and it checks for all of the Dante devices on the network and it specifies one of them as the master clock. And then that master clock keeps all of the other devices on that Dante network in sync with each other with less than one millisecond of latency, which is pretty amazing. Now, one of the real advantages with Dante is that you just use standard gigabit ethernet technology. This is using standard here. For example, I have a Cisco switch and I'm also using just regular old cat six cabling. So you don't have to spend a ton of money on proprietary switches and cables and things of that nature. These are just all off the shelf that you can get at any technology store. Now you might think, oh, is this something brand new? Is it really a tested technology? How well does it hold up? It's actually not a new technology, and it's been used a lot more in the live sound world than it has been in production sound for film and video, although that is changing. And in fact, we'll give you a couple of examples of how you could use something like this. And in fact, we have a link down below to a little piece that talks about how Dante was used on a big film that you've probably all heard of, La La Land. Now, in this particular case, we are actually recording with Dante right now. This microphone is feeding into a device called the switchback matrix, which is right here. This is the microphone input right here from my microphone, and it's coming into the matrix. Now you'll notice that the matrix also has an RJ45 jack with a CAT6 cable coming out of it. And what it's doing is it's taking the audio from this microphone. It has a preamplifier here with phantom power, and it's taking the audio from the microphone and converting it to digital. So it has a very high quality 
analog to digital converter in here, and then it's sending that audio out onto the Dante network. And we have this set up as a transmitter for input A. You can't really see it, it says B over here, but this is input A right here. Now, I actually have that routed over to my sound devices 888. You can see that's recording us right now. So what I've done is I set the sound devices 888 up, which is also a Dante enabled device. And I've set it up to be a receiver for the audio from the matrix. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using an app on my computer here. My computer is also on the network and it is using an app called Dante Controller, which allows me to tell which of these devices to send audio from itself to another one. So you can set up all the routing here and you can see it's super simple. You basically just look at your transmitter that you wanna send from and you put a check in the box to the receiver that you wanna send it to. You'll notice here that the matrix has four output channels and the sound device is 888 has 16 input channels. So the receiver channels are all input channels and the transmitters are output channels. So if we come back over here to the matrix, you can say, well, we only have two inputs. Why do you have four outputs <laughs> when you look at the software? Well, here's input one, here's input two, and this is a stereo unbalanced 3.5 millimeter input. So that's channels three and four right there. So those are the four channels you can send from the matrix out to other receivers on the Dante network. Now these inputs are quite good. Here we have a combination input jack, so we can do XLR or quarter inch balanced. And the XLR of course is a microphone level input and the quarter inch is actually usable for line level input. So if you need to send a line level input, you can control the gain for each of the inputs down here. And the matrix supplies up to 60 dB of gain for each of those microphone inputs. What's interesting too, is that these aren't just kind of run of the mill, they're actually high quality microphone inputs. And in fact, they're specced such that at 60 dB of gain, the total harmonic distortion plus noise spec is 0.001%. In addition to that, it's using Burr Brown 24-bit Delta Sigma analog to digital converters. So these aren't just run of the mill, off the shelf, $2 converters that you can buy. These are much higher quality than that. And in fact, you're hearing them right now. One very interesting thing about this device, the Matrix, is that you don't have to battery power it or plug it into AC power directly. In fact, what you do is it's powered over ethernet. And so your switch needs to supply power over ethernet. Many of the new switches actually have this capability and it's basically just delivering the power over the same ethernet cable that's delivering the data. So that makes it super convenient. You don't have to worry about changing out batteries halfway through a show or a production. And you also don't have to find an AC power outlet right next to this device here. So that makes things a lot easier. Now, the question is, how would you use this in film and video production? So the way I'm going to use this on my next production is that the matrix will sit up on set close to the boom operator, whereas the sound device is 888 will be on a cart a little bit farther away from set. Typically on a big production, it would be in Video Village. That's where the mixer would sit. And so I just have to then run a cable up to set. And from there, the boom operator will plug their microphone into this device, and that'll feed it back to the mixer in the cart in Video Village. Another thing that's pretty interesting about the Matrix is that not only is it a four output device, it also can receive four channels of audio. So you can monitor the, the inputs that are on the back of the device here. And you just use these three knobs here. So this is for input A, this is input B, and this is inputs C and D, the 3.5 millimeter input. But in addition to that, I can receive four channels of Dante audio from somewhere else out on the network and monitor that here. And I control the mix levels of those different Dante feeds with the concentric circles here. So in my headphone mix right here, I can listen to those feeds of Dante as well. So of course we've got a high quality headphone amplifier here. And so I could just feed a set of headphones out of this as a 3.5 millimeter TRS, but I could also send a wireless signal if I connect up a transmitter here. So I could send a wireless in-ear monitor via this as well. Now, why would we care about any sort of Dante feeds back to this device? In production sound, the mixer often has to talk to the other members of the sound department. So the boom operators or the utilities. In this case with the boom operator, what this allows you to do is to send a comm channel from the mixer back to the boom operator so that the boom operator, for example, can get messages from the mixer. So for example, the mixer might say, hey, I'm noticing that the batteries are almost out on actor X's transmitter. Please change those at the next, between the next take. 
And so that makes it a lot easier for the crew to communicate with each other using a device like this as well. Now, of course, there are other potential uses for a setup like this in film post-production as well. There's automated dialogue replacement and Foley recording. So in those cases, what you could potentially do is use the matrix as a device that sits within the, say for example, the dialogue replacement studio with the actual actor in there redoing their lines or dialogue replacing their lines. And you can feed them a mix from the mixed from the film, any of the sort of temporary tracks or whatever you have going so far so they can hear that while they're re-performing their lines and recording their lines. So you can feed from your mixer or digital audio workstation audio to this device. The performer can hear it through headphones, but also at the same time record using these inputs here back to the control room. And that could also apply for Foley as well. So you'll notice I mentioned something there. The control room will have a digital audio workstation working on a computer. Well, how do you get audio out of that onto a Dante network? Turns out that Audinate, the company that does Dante, also has an app called Virtual Sound Card, which essentially makes your computer another Dante device on the Dante network. So you can send and receive channels of digital audio from your digital audio workstation to any other Dante-enabled device out on the network. So that opens up a ton of different possibilities as well. And again, major advantage, you only have to run one cable out into the studio space with the Matrix or whatever other Dante device you use. As I mentioned before, there is a good example with a link down below to a piece on La La Land and how the production there used Dante. Specifically, they used a Sound Devices 970, which is a 64-channel Dante recorder, <laughs> which they used to get a whole ton of different wireless feeds from a whole bunch of different actors in the scene back to the production mixer who was able to record all of those channels. Now, there are a couple of questions that typically come up when people first hear about Dante, and the first of those is, can you do Dante over Wi-Fi? Unfortunately, at this time, the answer is no. And the reason for that is that Wi-Fi doesn't have the same low latency performance that a wired network has, especially a gigabit ethernet network. So it just can't support the really critical sync of all the different clocks of the devices on the Dante network. So perhaps someday in the future, we'll see that. But for right now, you do need a wired network. Next question, is it expensive? And the answer is, as we talked about before, no, you can use standard ethernet gear. So just a regular old gigabit switch plus Cat6 cabling, so it's basically off the shelf. You don't have to go out and buy super expensive cabling, super expensive switches, they're just standard. I don't mean to suggest that the other Dante devices are cheap. They're all, it's all professional gear. There's no consumer-based Dante devices yet that I've seen. One kind of potential gotcha is that the switch needs to not have a technology called green ethernet. Green ethernet is a way to save power when you're not using your switch. The problem with green ethernet is it can mess with the clock sync. And so you either need to be able to turn that feature off on your switch or have a switch that doesn't have the green ethernet technology. The question comes up, how many channels of audio can you send on a Dante network? And it really depends. So if you have a high quality switch or set of switches that perform very well, if you're using high quality, you know, CAT6 cabling, you can actually have hundreds of channels of digital audio on that network at a time. And if you're only using fast ethernet, 100 megabit, you can actually have tens of channels at a time. Now, this is only one really small example of using something like the Matrix and my sound device's 888 to do Dante. Obviously, this is probably overkill. <laughs> well, it depends on what you're doing, actually. But hopefully this gives you a sense for the types of practical problems you can solve when you do start working on bigger productions and you need to find a way to do a lot of different channels of audio. Or it could be a case where you're trying to get audio a fair distance from set back to the mixer and wireless just isn't gonna work out. In fact, this is probably cheaper than most wireless setups, high quality wireless feeds, so definitely something worth considering there. And then finally, we won't get into it here, but Dante can actually send video over ethernet as well. So some pretty exciting possibilities there in addition. So hopefully that was helpful for you. I hope that gives you kind of a sense for the types of problems you can solve. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.